This what's one it? is a little more complicated. What's the name of this one? Lake Erie Perch Fry. Okay, so for this, you use two different um, colors of thread. You start with something white or clearish kind of thing. This is uh, that um, club thread. Club thread, yes, mm -hmm. thank you. The club thread. I find this stuff extremely slippery, so make sure you have it on. For um, I start with this is uh, raw wool, ram's wool. It's called sometimes. It's, it's on the skin. I find this is um, better in some applications than using um, than using um, wool proper yarn, right? I just find this works better. You want to just take a little tuft of this. Again, I like to tie it in in the middle. See, like that. A couple of turns and then secure it this way. It has less chance of pulling out. That's probably a little heavy, so you can just do that. So you get it where you want it. Yeah, that looks good. Just a little stuff. Okay, the body of this piping, I buy mine at Walmart for a few dollars. I know the people in the fly shops would be upset with me. If anybody wants a couple of feet, come and get it. Measure it up. You don't want it too long because if it's too long, it's a real nuisance to tie it in place. Slide it over like this. Get your thread right to the back. You want to just sort of mush it on there a little bit, just so it veils a little bit of the tail. And then gather it up like that. Okay? Tie it off. yank on this stuff, it's not going anywhere. Okay, cut that off and we're finished with this color. We now switch to olive. Push this back a little bit, get your thread started. Get it around the thread there and what you want to do now is gather all of this up as well, tie it down. There's your body, okay? Nothing to it. Now, a little bit more of that orange. Sheldon, at that stage, would you want to uh, uh, put some head cement or a lacquer, on, clear lacquer on it, set it aside? On the back one. On the one at the back here, I would just take my head cement, see? Uh, I was thinking of the whole, uh, of the whole shebang. No. no. For longevity? Nope. Okay. Never been a problem. Okay. Except when a pike rips it to pieces, of course. But, which does happen. A little bit more. Here is a bit of a throat. Okay, so now this is supposed to be a perch fry. They have those little orange bits, right? So there we go. Just tie everything down, make sure everything's nice and neat. Now comes the magic. Take some crystal flash. 
supposed to be a yellow perch, so lost a strand there. Okay, here we go. Like that. Two, three, wrap it forward a few turns. Take this now. Grab it all together. And secure it on top like that. Okay? <coughs> And then work on the th on the head again at this point. You want to build this up so that it completely covers all of that like that. And then you want to take your scissors and go for length. And what I want to do is I don't want it to be much more than where the tail ends. And I'll, I'll try and cut it back at a bit of an angle like that, a few strands at a time. I don't want it to be too square, OK? There we are. And then, this is Peacock Crystal Flash. You want about the same amount. Get right up on top there. Pull it back over the top. And again. Play it off. Like that. Now, for the presentation model, <laughs> I'll put little tiny eyes on the head. To do that, what you want to do is first put some head cement on here. Let it dry thoroughly. Then stick the eyes on. And then cover it with something like this AV stuff here, the UV stuff. UV. And cure it, and you'll bulletproof. There you go. This has proven to be, as I said, a really effective pattern. It has caught fish. Even I have been embarrassed. There you go. Have a look at that. That's probably the most complicated fly we'll do tonight. You use the tape eyes? Yeah, the little um, piece. Oh, yeah. Okay. Tiniest ones you can get. Oh, yeah. What you do is take your scissors and on the, at the back like that, just take it on the side of the thread, you see, and flatten it. Just squeeze it, and that flattens it and gives you a nice place to stick onto. All right? And then, as I said, you cover that in. Um, Head cement. Well, let's put some head cement on it and we'll put the eyes on later. We'll do that after one of the other flies. Try not to let it soak into the throat too much. That, um, that um, you use wool would <coughs> suck it up. <coughs> Sorry, say again? Do you use that on a, a, a sinking line? Um, on a full sinking line. Usually a type 3 full sinking line with two or three flies on the leader. Okay. This will be the first dropper up from the... I don't, I don't generally put this one as the point fly, it'll be one of the droppers, usually the first one. Then above it, I might put something smaller. But I, I'm, you know, I don't know. Um, it's really not that big a pattern. Uh, I find that at um, this time of year, June, when the, when the bass season opens, the bait fish and whatnot are small. They get bigger as the season goes on. 
And you watch the people down there with their casting plugs and stuff, and they're casting um, lures and whatnot that you would cast at the end of the season. And they're not catching anything. Or they catch an occasional fish. I, re <laughs> I was there, not last year, but the year before. This year it was really windy. We got blown off early. But the year before, I had those beautiful days. And I'm out there, and there's a bunch of boats out there. And I'm kicking around in my pontoon boat. And there's these two guys and a young fella in a boat. And the kid says to his father, hey, Dad, he's using a fly rod. He's got another one. Hey, Dad, he's got another one. Hey, Dad, he's got another one. Just loved it. Just absolutely ate it up. I loved it. It was, even I was embarrassed for a little while. Anyway.